Hey guys, welcome back to the Creating with Impact podcast. I just wanted to do um, kind of a short follow-up episode this week, uh, kind of expanding a little bit more on mental health in the workplace. Um, I actually use this app and this is not sponsored, unfortunately, but (laughs) I do use this app called Evidation, which... um, Basically, you can get points for tracking like your sleep and how you feel, like how good of a sleep you get, how good you feel in the morning, that kind of thing. And I've found it to be kind of helpful, um, at least with kind of checking in with myself and seeing how I'm feeling. And then um, over time, kind of seeing if there's a pattern with how well I'm sleeping and how well I feel in the morning. There usually is. So... um, Anyway, they'll also do some articles about like mental health, about physical health, about just, it's pretty broad, but most of it is focused on health and wellness. Um, So I'm going to actually today just share an article with you that I found um, actually right around the time that I was doing that episode about workplace mental health. And it's basically just going to be about how to maintain positive mental health in the workplace. So thank you guys for listening and let's get started. Here on the Creating with Impact podcast, we focus on all things related to being a multi-passionate creative, along with the focus on mental health that can and should come along with that. We'll explore how to live happy, healthy lives when our creative minds encounter chaotic obstacles and how to find your rhythm when life throws you off balance. I'll give you some tips and tricks that I learned from my own experiences and talk with people from all over to find out what helped them find their purpose and passion and to find their own kind of success and happiness in their lives. Together, we can make a happier, healthier, more creative world. So like I said, this episode is going to be all about maintaining positive mental health in the workplace. So I know as creatives, a lot of times we are going to have a day job or a part-time job or something to help us pay the bills, especially in the beginning. And even as we go on with our projects too, because sometimes we just don't want to put that much pressure on the things that we're creating to be able to support us because sometimes when we put that pressure on ourselves it ends up affecting what we're creating and not necessarily in a positive way but again it just depends on who you are what you're doing a bunch of different things so uh, I just want to go ahead and read this article for those of us that are still working in a traditional role or at a part-time job Um, especially if it's something that we aren't necessarily passionate about, which is totally fine. So again, this article comes from Evidation. So it goes. The average person spends around 90,000 hours or one third of their life at work. So it's important to ensure that we're in a healthy mind space while we're there. Maintaining positive mental health is critical to health and well-being, but it's also important to our success at work and the success of our employers. Many of us are aware that individuals struggling with mental health issues are at greater risk for a variety of health conditions, but did you know they're also at greater risk for disability, unemployment, and underemployment? In fact, according to the CDC, poor mental health and stress can negatively affect job performance and productivity, engagement with one's work, communication with coworkers, and physical capability and daily functioning. But sometimes it can be difficult to focus on mental well-being at work because we're focused on other things like daily tasks, conversations, and goals to hit. On the other hand, sometimes it's difficult to focus on work if we're not making mental health a priority. The following tips can help you learn more about what benefits your company may offer, how you can make work more enjoyable, and how to move forward from an unhealthy work environment. Maintaining good mental health can be tough to navigate, 
but with these small tips, you can improve your happiness in the workplace. So the first one is educate yourself on workplace benefits. When you first join a new company, there's usually a short window for you to choose your benefits, things like health insurance, disability insurance, and retirement. Contributions. Not all employers offer the same benefits, so make sure you have a clear understanding of what's available to you. If you're unsure or have any questions, reach out to your HR department for guidance. You don't have to go through this process alone. If you miss the initial enrollment period, typically 30 to 60 days, don't worry, there's a recurring open enrollment period once a year. Take advantage of the time you have between enrollment periods to educate yourself on the benefits your employer offers, as it may be overwhelming to make those decisions initially. After considering your employee benefits, start thinking about what else your company may offer, things such as work from home stipend, bonuses, or possibly paid meals. These are things your employer may provide that aren't required, but can help increase your job satisfaction. Secondly, make work more enjoyable. A big part of what determines your happiness in the workplace is how your coworkers and employers treat you as an individual. A great workplace is one that's encouraging and motivating, whether you're doing a great job or struggling and need some support. Having peers you feel comfortable talking to can make or break your mental health. Come up with some new ways to help you better connect with your coworkers. Consider taking the initiative to start something new. Maybe you don't have any hangouts outside of scheduled meetings and you feel it would help you grow your connections. Don't be afraid to be the change you want to see in your place of work. Along with having good relationships with coworkers, consider the other parts of your work that you find enjoyable. It all ties together, so if you love the work you do but you just can't connect with your peers, it could lead to you being unhappy. Maybe you really enjoy going to happy hours and hangouts with your coworkers, but you don't truly love the work you do. Consider all the components that make up your workday and push yourself to weed out what might be making you unhappy and consider making a change. If you find yourself struggling at work, but you're not sure why, try reaching out to a coworker, manager, or HR for support. Sometimes talking your struggles out with someone is the best way to boost your mental health. More often than not, you might come to realize that others have been in your position before and can provide some guidance. There are many ways to make work an enjoyable experience. You can positively change your mental health outside of work as well. Just as work can affect your personal life, your personal life can affect the way you work. Consider including more time for self-care into your routine. Healing from an unhealthy workplace. If you've experienced an unhealthy work environment, then you know what kind of toll it can take on your mental health. Working a job you don't love can lead to long, uneventful days and feelings of unfulfillment. If you can, try to find something about your job you enjoy. Sometimes just shifting your perspective can make a huge difference. But other times, the situation you're in may not be so easy to control. A toxic work environment, for example, can lead to serious mental health concerns and affects entire teams or companies. Once you realize you're in an unhealthy work environment, reach out to any support options you may have, like a supportive manager or your HR department. If that doesn't work, start taking steps to make a significant change. If you decide to look for a new job, Focus on a list of things you want out of a new role. It's also a good idea to research a company before applying. You can even search for a career from some of the top rated best places to work. Really quick on that, I'm just going to interject. Glassdoor is your friend. Definitely use Glassdoor. Try to remember not all companies are alike. When you move from one company to another, take what you learned from your previous role and apply it to your new position and company. If your past work made you unhappy due to the lack of communication, allow yourself in your new position to open up more about how you're feeling with your manager. Most managers appreciate the transparency in order to better support you. 
You might even consider some at-home therapy sessions to boost your confidence going forward. Continue to focus on your mental health. Taking time to better understand what things in your work environment are affecting your mental health is a great way to improve your mental well-being. Also, consider looking into things you can do to help you increase your happiness within the workplace. Keep in mind that not all companies follow the same guidelines, nor do they offer the same benefits. Find a place that best suits you, your needs, and your personality. Never settle for a place that continues to make you unhappy. If you came from an unhealthy environment, learn what could help you reach a point of growth for the future. After all, you don't want to allow work to consume your mental health to a point that it starts affecting your personal life. Continue to put your mental health first in all aspects of your job, from the work itself to growing your connections with your fellow employees. Your mental health matters and should be prioritized in your place of work and at home. So some of those things were things that I talked about last week, but they definitely are worth repeating again just to make sure. (laughs) Um, Because yeah, especially for those of us that do need part-time jobs or day jobs in order to support our creative pursuits, it's definitely worth it to make sure that you find a place that suits you, suits your personality, and isn't going to be detrimental to your mental health. Because Like I was saying in the last episode and pretty much this whole podcast, (laughs) your mental health is everything and without it, you're not going to be healthy and you're not going to be productive and overall, you're just not going to be enjoying life as much as you could. So really, really take the time to prioritize that. And as always, you can find me at creatingwithimpact.com or on Instagram at creatingwithimpactpod. You can also check out Creating with Impact on Patreon at patreon.com slash creatingwithimpact, where you can become a subscriber and get all sorts of extra content, including multi-passionate mini biographies for extra inspiration, personal shout outs, live workshops, and PDF music and yoga downloads, just to name a few. If you have any stories or successes you'd like to share or to just get in on the conversation, you can email creatingwithimpactpod at gmail.com. Thank you guys so much. And I See you next week.